This is the part 2 of my coloring series from my coloring book Monstars in the Closet. I'll be clicking on this playlist, be clicking on the shuffle mode to see which song I get. So this is the song that came on shuffle mode by Sister Rosetta Tharp. You are the winner of this coloring challenge. I'm gonna start off with watercolors. Shout out to Clem's Cozy Corner for giving me the idea of creating a grayscale coloring. I'm gonna be using this image from the internet as a reference for this goddess. I'm gonna add some red in the gray so that it looks like a faded black reddish shadow. I'm gonna be using the watercolor as the base, so like the first layer. We're gonna start off with the dress. Gray is the color that is most likely associated with being forgotten or being invisible, which is for a lot of black women, I think, in rock and roll. And in the music industry in general, especially when we're talking about 1930s, 1940s, like that time. Like literally, if you Google who is the godmother of rock and roll, I can bet you that her name is the first one that's gonna come up. She literally inspired so many of her male contemporaries. Her music is like the perfect blend of church and nightclub. She pioneered the entire genre of rock and roll as a woman, but because she did not cater to the white audiences, she did not get the credit that she really deserved. Like literally, I didn't even know who she was, even though I have been a rock and roll fan for years before I started creating this coloring book, and I can bet that you haven't heard of her either. So consider this coloring as a tribute to, to the godmother of rock and roll because she did not get her flowers. We're gonna make sure that the coloring doesn't look completely gray. We're gonna add some brownish, reddish hues to the gray. The way I composed this entire illustration, I wanted to make sure that Sister Rosetta was in the middle, like she's the star. But because being a queer black woman in the 1940s, like you can imagine why she was lost to time. Like if I ask you to name who is the father of rock and roll, you would most likely say someone like Elvis Presley or Chuck Berry or something like that, I'll get to that later, okay? But whose name comes up when we're talking about the mother of rock and roll? So using a lot of grey to color her dress and her body sort of symbolizes how she is lost and forgotten to time, while her white contemporaries haven't been. So you can see a lot of these clown-like characters like laughing in the background. I know that's a very shocking and intense image, but this is a horror coloring book, so of course the clowns had to be in it. Compared to the image of Rosetta, I wanted to make sure that the clowns look very happy, excited, energetic, you know, very visible. According to the feelings wheel, yellow is the color associated with being happy or laughing or something like that. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say that the male rock stars of the time, the clowns, it is kind of implied but that's not what I'm saying here. To me, when I think of being invisible or like not acknowledged for my work, it literally feels like I'm being laughed at. So to me, the laughing clowns imply not being acknowledged for your work because of who you are. So the clowns are going to be yellow, red, orange, sort of these very vibrant, bright, very attention-grabbing colors. I hope you can see where I'm going with this. Even though they're in the background, they're getting all the attention. But Sister Rosetta, she's in the middle, she's in the spotlight. But she's all grey. Because she's lost and forgotten to time and not really acknowledged for her work. I think the background should be like a black or a grey gradient. So now we're done with the first phase, which is the watercolors. And now we're moving on to the color pencils. First, I'm going to quickly use this black color pencil to make sure that I sh create shadows in all the dark areas, so the pleats in the skirt, the arms, the background, like anything that needs a dark shadow, I'm gonna be using this color pencil to create that. And I'm gonna be using purple to create depth between the clown's heads, because right now the whole image looks kind of flat. I'm gonna make sure that I only shade the corners and not like in the middle. That's where the shadows are usually. Then I'm going to use this olive green marker to create even more depth with the clowns. I'm just gonna make sure that the clowns in the background uh, really pop out because they're supposed to be where your attention is gonna go as a viewer, not in the middle, which is the intention. I think we're almost done with the finishing touches. At the end, I'm going to use my white pencil blender and make sure that I highlight the areas that need highlighting. I think after this coloring, I'm really going to go look up even more female icons of rock and roll that I didn't even know about, that were lost and forgotten to time, and I really hope you take out some time to do the same, because these women have contributed so much in their fields, but they don't get the recognition that they deserve, and I really hope that this can be something that can make even a little bit of difference. So here is the end result. I really hope that you like this. I'm going to be posting the part 3, I think the day after tomorrow. If you're really invested in this series, I would really hope that you wait for that video. See you in part 3.